Hey everyone, it's Jen Sheffer. Thanks for joining me for today's training tutorial on Nearpod. Today we are going to look at a live lesson in Nearpod from both the teacher and the student perspective. And this will really help you conceptualize exactly what your students will be seeing on their screens when you are facilitating a Nearpod lesson. So on the left hand side, I'm logged in as a teacher and that's where I'll be um, showcasing the lesson from. And on the right hand side, it is my, my student view. So I've logged in as a student at uh, join.nearpod.com. Your students will open up the Nearpod app and they will be on their iPads. It's going to look um, almost completely identical, um, but I'm showing you this from uh, a Chromebook perspective. Um, so without further ado, let's get started by hovering over the lesson here that I'm going to facilitate. And I'm going to click on live participation and then the join code will appear for the students to enter on their devices. So they'll open up their Nearpod apps, they'll be logged in with their Google accounts, and when that join code appears, they will enter it. You can put that join code in the Google Meet chat, or you could post it as a Seesaw announcement, um, however you want to show it to them um, or, or give it to them. They will enter the code, and then they will click on Join, and they will be brought to the first slide in the lesson. They will not see um, the join code that is displayed on your screen as, as the teacher. You will manually close this uh, join code um, box here. So I'm going to go ahead and close that. The students are going to be brought to a screen where they will enter their first and last name. They'll click join lesson. Um, it's up to you if you want them to add last names. It's, it's entirely your call. But here we are teacher side on the left, student side on the right. Before you begin, I would highly recommend clicking on the student list icon on the bottom left to make sure that all of your students are successfully in the session. You'll notice that when you do that, that student list screen does not appear on the student side. Once you've verified everyone is in the lesson, you are good to go and you can advance to the next slide. The students will be pushed into their first activity, and this is a collaborate board. What you see on your end as the teacher is a notification asking if you would like to approve student comments before they are posted. And you can also check this box here that says you want to apply that for the rest of this lesson. I would recommend you check this off and click yes. Once you do that, your students now have access to the Collaborate board. They're asked, what would you do if you were the President of the United States? I'm gonna say, I would work on improving the environment. The students can enter their response. They can type their response, or they could add an image if they wanted to, and then they can click Post. They'll see their Post-it note is on the board. However, it's not yet been approved. It says pending approval. On your end as the teacher, you get the notification that a student has posted so you can read what they have written. You can determine is it, accept, is it appropriate or not. You can approve it if it is. Then you can go ahead and like their comment. They can like their own comment if they want. You also have the option down here to show or hide student names when sharing answers with the class. So depending on the nature of the lesson, um, that will determine do you want students to see names or not. You also have the ability to time students on all of these different activities. Once your Collaborate board is done, you can advance to the next activity. And this is an open-ended question. So students get that prompt. This is an open-ended question. They can record a response with audio, and this works very nicely on the iPad, or they can type. So um, we can say uh, adults, 18 and over who are U.S. citizens. Once they've typed their response or they've done their recording, they can click submit. They receive this got it, your answer has been submitted notification. They can also edit their answer if you um, allow them to do that. You as the teacher receive the student name, their answer in real time, and uh, the percentage of your students who are participating. We're going to move to the next activity. This is a poll. Students receive that poll notification. They are asked, who do, the, who do they think will win the presidential election? They can make their response. 
You as the teacher will see that in real time. The response is going to pop up in just a second. Underneath choice A, you'll see a small dot appear. Oh, actually I have to hit submit first. So make sure your students hit submit. Once they do that, they receive that got it response. You as the teacher now see they have responded. Moving to the next slide, this is a quiz. Students receive the quiz notification. They are asked who is the first president of the United States. They make their selection. Down at the bottom, they're going to click next to advance to question two. And if they're really paying attention, they're gonna know the answer is 11, but um, I apologize for that. I didn't update this quiz um, before I made this tutorial, but once they've done that, they can click on submit. They receive the got it response. You receive their score instantaneously. Moving to the next slide, they receive the notification that this is uh, not interactive. This is a virtual reality um, field trip. It's uh, quite similar to uh, Google Earth um, or uh, just a 3D image. So this might be something you do at the very beginning of a lesson, maybe asking them, what do you think this is a picture of? They can explore and rotate through this 360 image, um, but they have to manually move the image. You don't control it for them. So that's the um, virtual reality or the um, virtual field trip. The next activity is a draw it activity. Um, I think the um, notification just may have missed. So I'm gonna quickly go back. I may have gone a bit too fast. The VR is going to appear. I'm just gonna advance one more time. I guess there is no notification for the draw it, but this is the draw it activity. Um, this is similar to Seesaw in terms of having students uh, be able to draw and annotate. This doesn't have to be an image. This could be a uh, passage um, that they have to annotate. They can add text. They can add images. They can take pictures. They can erase. I'm going to go ahead and just say I want my students to identify the New England states. They can draw. When they hit submit, you'll see that it says a waiting drawing, then it shows in progress, and then it's going to change to submitted in just a moment. Um, but as students are drawing, when you see that in progress button, you can see what they're doing in real time. So you will be able to monitor participation uh, before students submit their final drawing. So that is a fantastic feature. I'm going to move to the next activity. This will prompt students that they are going to be doing a fill in the blank. So um, this is a drag and drop interface. As soon as I start adding, it's a little bit tricky to do this on a, a Chromebook, so my apologies, um, but they can do it very, very easily on an iPad, um, the drag and drop interface. Um, see um so to make one of these there is a, another tutorial that i have made that will show you how to make a fill in the blank um, but once your students fill everything out drag and drop their their words this is excellent for vocabulary review um, once they hit done they're going to get a score it's going to show them how many they got correct um, and that we will show you their score as well as the teacher. So again, this, um, this goes very, very fast on an iPad. Um, and it does have to be exact. They have to get it right in the, um, right in that white box. Very simple to make, copy and paste text from um, the web or you can type in your own text and you highlight the words and they go into a word bank. It's really easy to make. I think a lot of fun for the kids as well. When I click on done, I get an instant score that I received eight out of eight correct answers. I'm going to click next. And this is a video. So I am asked where would I like to play this video? I'm going to say all devices. So it's pushing my student into the video. It says eyes up front. So you could be sharing your screen. I'm gonna click play. Welcome to Kids Academy. 
Hi, boys and girls. I'm going to turn the volume off. This is a, a kid's video about voting, but I want to just show you when I advance the video to this area, and I'm going to have a question that's going to appear in just a moment, that question is going to also appear on the student's devices in, in real time. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click on it. Might not be able to click on it. There we go. So I thank you for your patience. So I jumped ahead because I want you to I want you to see what will happen. So during the video, this question is going to pop up. And the question is, how old do you have to be to vote so my students can make their selection? And then they are going to click submit. So you as the teacher are going to see this data on your screen showing you the percentage, percentage of students who answered correctly, incorrectly, and those who did not answer. So I think this is a real game changer for um, video and adding in those uh, assessment questions during the video so that you can ensure your students are not only paying attention, but they're comprehending the content of the video. So I hope you are excited to try that. And again, you may just pick one or two of these Nearpod tools to start uh, to gain some comfort. And then um, once you feel proficient, you can start to add more. But um, the video is um, a really excellent tool. So it says, got it, your answer has been submitted. And again, there'll be a tutorial on how you can make those interactive videos. And that comes to the end of all of the interactive features that I want to show. The uh, remainder of this presentation are on um, the static slides, but you can see that you as the teacher have full control over advancing the slides in a Nearpod lesson. When you are done, you are going to click on the Nearpod logo in the center of your screen, and you can click reports. You'll notice that as you're doing that, your students are not seeing that. So you can go ahead before the lesson ends to um, say that, yes, you would like these reports to be sent to your email. Then you can go to the Nearpod logo and hit end session. It's that you get a prompt asking if you're sure you want the session to end. It's going to end the session for all logged in students. You can click yes. When you do that, your student receives the notification that the teacher has ended the session that they were signed into. So I hope that this tutorial has um, given you some um, extra um, comfort in knowing what you present in, in terms of what the students will see and that you feel comfortable, you can, can um, conceptualize this better. Um, and please, please, please do not hesitate to reach out to me if you would like one-on-one -on -one or small group training, or if you have additional questions, just send me an email. Um, but I appreciate you watching and spending some time with me and stay tuned for more videos. Thank you.